Hey, this is Josh for Retool.net, and in the last video we had an introduction into what's new in Premiere Pro, the April 2017 version of Premiere Pro 2017. In this video, we hope to go into more detail about the new Essential Graphics panel and the workflow between Premiere Pro and After Effects. Originally, we tried to combine those two videos, but it just became too long. So for those people really curious about how the workflow works, how to import, export, and what kind of controls you can bring over from After Effects, this is the video for you. So in this quick example, before we leave Premiere Pro and go over to After Effects, I just wanted to talk about Let's say you have a Premiere Pro motion graphics template and you want to save that out for a future use for yourself or another editor. How do you go about that? So this one is actually just one of the presets that it shipped with. But for this example, we're going to pretend this is something that we created. Obviously, I can edit all of these layers in the edit panel. And once I'm happy with this as a template, if I want to export it for someone else, I would actually go over to the graphics menu. And here you'll see an option called export as motion graphics template. Now, once you go there, it's going to ask you what you want to save it as. So I'm going to call it lower third. And probably by default, it's going to have essential graphics selected. So if you select that, let me show you what happens. If I hit OK and I go over to my browse panel, making sure I'm in the root of essential graphics, you'll see there's a new graphic called lower third. So that's obviously if you're working on the same one system all the time and you just want it to be added to your panel. Now from here, you can right click it and move it to other folders. So I can go move and I could move it to my stuff, which is a folder I created for my templates. Now for now, I'm just going to delete that and I'm just going to show you a few other ways that you could export that. Again, I'm just going to go over to the graphics menu, export as motion graphics template. And this time I'm going to look at some of those other options. First, I'm going to name it lower third and I could do local drive. So this would let me export a file. So this is good if you want to take it on a thumb drive, email it to someone, put it on Dropbox, something like that. So I'll just select my desktop, select the folder and hit OK. If I look at Finder for my desktop, there is a lower third.mogrt file and I could just import that back into Premiere. To import a title, I could do it from right here in the browse panel, install motion graphics template, and I could select that file. I'll hit open, and here it is in my essential graphics panel. I'm gonna delete that, hit okay. I could also go to the graphics menu, install motion graphics template, and I'm gonna select the same lower third, and here it is, so I will delete that. Now, the other thing you could do for exporting it is going back to the graphics menu, export as motion graphics template, and again, lower third. And this time I'm going to select, well, basically one of my libraries. So it could be my library default, social icons. So let's take a look at that. If I do it to this library that I created called social icons and I hit OK, now I could go to the Browse tab here and select Libraries and Social Icons, and it will only show me what motion graphics templates I have if I'm in the Essential Graphics panel. Or I could even go over to the Libraries panel here and see motion graphics templates. And here, of course, here are all of my social icons. And here is my lower third, which I could just drag in either from the Libraries panel, or of course, I can do it from the Essential Graphics panel. So that's basically how to work with Premiere titles. Now let's talk about the After Effects integration. Now I showed you a few quick examples that ship with the software, like these AE News Package, AE Sports Package, AE Gaming Package, but I wanna show you how those are made and basically what kind of controls you have in After Effects, how you export them and get them over to Premiere. So I'm just going to go over to After Effects real quick, and I have this project that I created really quickly. Now, it's just a really simple lower third, nothing fancy here. It's not very nice even, but I'm just going to show you how it was created and how the Essential Graphics panel, you'll notice there is a new Essential Graphics panel and workspace in After Effects as well, how it works in After Effects, how you can add various properties. So you can see things that I already added. So here's a layer called Main Text and its color. Here's subtext and its color. Now, 
The text itself is added via using the source text parameter. I'm going to get a warning saying it's already referenced and can only be referenced once. So obviously I won't do that. But the actual fill color of text is not something that, for whatever reason, is selectable. I guess partially because that goes into the source text uh, actual property in After Effects. So the way you have to do it is you use a fill effect. So in this case, I just added a fill effect, changed the color to white, and then just drag that in. Once you drag it in, you can change the order of any of these properties. So I could drag up or down just to make it clearer. And of course, I can click in here and rename. So I just named the text whatever they said. So it's clear for the person who's working on it what they're changing. So again, I have the color for the subtext. Now here I have background color, which actually now that I think about it should be called bar color because it's really the bar behind the text that I'm controlling and the bar opacity. And then I have footage and footage opacity. Now someone's probably not going to use this footage. I just added that for example's sake to show you guys how it works if you did have footage in there. And let me show you how that works. There's two pieces of footage in here. There's the background clip full screen. So I'm going to shut that all the way off. And then there's footage, which is the actual footage within the bar. So if you want to have that hint of footage underneath the bar itself. So I'm really just leaving these in here so you see how the whole collecting process works. Probably not going to use the background clip, certainly. But the other thing I wanted to show with this is that this essential graphics panel is not just for things that you need to take over to Premiere. It could just be setting something up for easy use for another After Effects artist. So let's say you create a really complicated project and you just want the artist to be able to go into your project and change a few things quickly. Maybe they're less experienced in After Effects. Maybe it's just a really confusing project and you want to make it clear to them what they're changing. You can just drag things right into here and they could go over to the Essential Graphics panel and quickly change it. Now, if you do, of course, want to get it over to Premiere, you're going to go over to here where it says Export Motion Graphics Template. Now, one thing you want to do before you do that is set a name. So I have this called Graphics Lower Third New. I'm going to change that just to Graphics Lower Third. And it's referencing the composition Graphics Lower Third. Now, you can reference pre-comps as long as whatever you're referencing is also in the comp that is being sent out to Premiere. So in other words, if I have a pre-comp that's not actually in use in this comp, it's not going to work. If it's just a comp that's in my project but has nothing to do with the actual thing that I'm sending over to Premiere, it's not going to work. I'll show you that real quick. So if I make a new composition and I call this pre-comp, and I'm just going to add a solid, and I'm going to add the effect fill, and let's say I want to be able to change the color of the solid. If I drag this color property, and you have to do it from down here in the timeline, not up here in the effects control, that's something important to note. It's going to say property is unrelated to graphics lower third and will not affect rendering. So it will go in there, but you'll see it's outlined with this background here showing you it's really not relevant to your results. But if, for instance, I were to take that pre-comp, drag it in here, you'll notice it's no longer selected with the background color and it's actually visible in my comp. It might take a second to refresh as it did there. I'm just going to delete that pre-comp and delete it from my project. And you'll notice it also deletes it from the Essential Graphics panel. So let's get this over to Premiere. Now one quick note before we learn how to get this over to Premiere, you'll also notice something called Add Comment. And that is just for the editor or maybe it's for the other After Effects artist just to tell them some instructions. So in this comment I'm just going to write to have no full screen background clip set opacity to zero. Now let's get it over to Premiere. I'm going to hit Export Motion Graphics Template. It's going to tell me it needs to be saved, so I'll hit OK. And then it's essentially going to start collecting my project. And it's collecting my project so that if I'm on another system, all of these footage layers are part of that .mogrt file as well. So now I can say whether I want it to be 
on the local drive, the essential graphics, or any of my libraries. So I'm just going to show you local drive just to show you an important aspect here. And I'm going to hit OK. It's going to take a second to create that file again, in this case, because there's footage that it's referencing. So if I take a quick look over at my desktop, you'll see that I have this .mogrt file and it's 188 megabytes. Now, if I wasn't referencing any footage, it would be much smaller than that. But it's just something to keep in mind if you have a lot of footage referenced here. So the other way, of course, I could do that is go to export motion graphics template. Again, it's going to collect it because it thinks I'm trying to do this again. And and this time I'm just going to select essential graphics. Now the good thing about this is I don't have to import it when I go to Premiere. It should just be there when I tab back over. I'll hit OK. And now I'm just going to go over to Premiere and you'll see it's already in there. It's called graphics lower third and I'm just going to drag that into my project. It's going to bring in a folder called motion graphics template and it's going to bring that right in. So once I go in here if I'm in the edit tab, you'll see all of the parameters that I set up, including the comments to have no full screen background clip set opacity to zero. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to change main text to retooled.net. And I'm going to make the subtext essential graphics. Now I could also do something like size in there that would let the user scale that text down if appropriate. I didn't do that in this case, but I'll show you some more complicated examples soon. Now let's change the color of the subtext. Something hideous. And again, now I'm going to change the bar color. I'll just do something like that. Now let's say I decide I don't like the footage that's built into there. I can turn down the footage opacity all the way or just make it less apparent depending on what background footage I have underneath it. So you can see this is much more flexible than the old graphics workflow was with After Effects where you were only able to change some simple text. This you can change a lot, not, not everything, but a lot. And again, this is a version 1.0, so probably more things will come to this panel in the future. Let's go over a bit more complicated of an example. And I'm going to go back over to After Effects and I'm going to open up another project I created and this one is called 3D Text. This one, I just wanted to show you a few things. One, if I go over to 3D Renderer, you'll see this is using Cinema 4D as the renderer. So you're using Cinema 4D's graphic engine to basically extrude your text, create reflections, render the scene as a whole. Now. I've already done some things where I put some text in the essential graphics panel. So this is blah, blah, blah. I can change the depth of the actual letters. I can change the pucker amount, which is basically changing the shape of that reflective object in the background. I can change the skew on that as well. And I have it toolkitted over. So I'm gonna just kind of set these back to where they were. And you'll also notice I have a 3D camera move in here, some 3D lights. And now I'm just going to click Export Graphics Template, hit Save. I'm just going to save it to the Essential Graphics panel. You'll notice it was much quicker that time because it's not really referencing any files here. Let me just show you on disk. And this time I'm going to select Local Drive, hit OK, and go to 3D Text. And this one's only 58 kilobytes. So if you're not referencing footage, it's going to be much smaller. So I did already save it to the Essential Graphics panel, so it should be in there. Here it's called 3D Text, and I'm just going to drag that in. Now, Obviously, this is a little bit heavier on the processor. You might need to render it to get better performance, but the cool thing is that it should just work, although it's taking quite a while to load. All right, here it finally loaded, and here's my text. So I'm going to change that to retool.net, and I'm going to change my extrusion depth to 100. So let's just see what that looks like. All right, and now I'm going to change the pucker amount to 35. Again, obviously, this is a little slower to respond because it has full reflections, lights, a 3D camera move, and all that. This scene is really slow in After Effects, too. So obviously, your mileage will vary based on your system. 
Let's just go back over to After Effects and I want to talk about another scene. Now this one is also using the Cinema 4D renderer. So we'll see how a less complicated scene works. But in this one I want to talk about some of the sort of rigging challenges for the Essential Graphics panel. Now there's certain parameters that it allows and certain parameters that it doesn't allow. If I select a composition and I hit Solo Supported Properties, it will show you properties that it supports and it seems pretty extensive and it, it is pretty extensive. The problem is it doesn't accept properties like position that have three numbers associated with it. The workaround to that is what I've done here is you go over to the graph editor and check this button which separates the dimensions and then it's X, Y, and Z position instead of if I were to make a new null and hit P, it's a two parameter thing. And then if I add 3D, it's now a three parameter. If I were to try to drag that in, it says property type is not yet supported. So again, the workaround is to separate the X, Y, and Z, and then you could drag them in there. So I've done that here where I have this X position slider. Now the other thing it doesn't support is visibility. So I can't put whether a layer is visible into the essential graphics panel, but there are some workarounds. There are expressions and with expressions you can do a lot of these things. Now I found a workaround through the site premium beat which was an expression to set up opacity based on an expression for a layer. However, once I did it with opacity, I found this weird bug I was having with the Cinema 4D renderer and these social icons. So let me just show you what it is. I have these set up, and if I hit reveal in timeline, I have these effects. Now these, if you go to effect, Expression controls is just a checkbox control. You can do other things with point controls or slider controls, but this is a checkbox control. And then what I did to control, well, I tried it with opacity at first, where I set up the opacity, this expression to turn the layer on and off. But again, that was giving me some weird render issues with the Cinema 4D renderer. So instead, I just set it to Y position. And basically what it's saying is, if the checkbox is on, then have it at negative 81.7 position. If it's set to off, have it at negative 50,000 in position, which basically just throws it out of the comp window so we don't have to look at it anymore. And in practice, basically what I could do is I could turn the YouTube logo off and turn the Twitter logo on. If I go down to the Twitter logo here, basically you'll, you'll see with it on, it's at negative 81.7. If I shut it off, it's just going to move it to negative 50,000, which just gets it off the screen. And there are creative things like that that you can do to work around some of these early limitations. So then I have my background color, my background opacity. I have both pieces of text. And then I have a null that's controlling the exposition of the text and the social icons. So again, I'm just going to hit export motion graphics template. It's going to tell me it needs to be saved and I'm going to do it to the essential graphics panel and head over to Premiere. But before I do, I noticed that I forgot to do something and that is set the poster frame. If I look at it, it's just a black thumbnail and that's not really going to help me identify it. So I'm just going to hit set poster frame and now I'll see that if I wanted it to be with the YouTube instead of the Twitter, I can switch that out and hit set poster frame again and then I'll just re-export it hit save and hit OK. All right, so now I'm going to go over to Premiere and I'll see that social media and I'm just going to check out what it looks like. So if I go over to edit, you'll see I have all my checkboxes. So let's say for instance, I wanted to say, instead of subscribe to our YouTube channel, I want to say, follow us on Facebook. So I'm going to turn on the Facebook icon and I'm going to get rid of the word channel. And I'm just going to change this first part to follow us on. And now I just kind of want to move it over to the right a little bit. So I'm just going to try 200. A little bit too far, so let's try 100. Obviously, I could slide it as well. 
and now it says follow us on Facebook. So with it set to 100, you can see it's now basically in the center of the screen. If I hit play, we'll see how this one performs, and it's not really playing, but at least I can see the motion a little bit. But let's try rendering this one out and see how it does. It's definitely a simpler scene. All right, so that one didn't take too long at all. And if I hit play, you'll notice I have that logo dropping down and it says follow us on Facebook. If I wanted to say check out our Twitter account, I can do that too. And then I'm gonna set it back to zero and see how that looks. And let's this time go minus 100. Cool, so it's something that you could easily customize. I can turn down the background color. I can change the color based on whatever my color scheme is and whatever logo I'm using for that matter. You could even do things like setting up whether you only want all caps to be used, which I didn't work in here, but there are ways to do it. It's really going to be quite powerful. I think that this is something that Adobe is really going to develop over the years. Again, to me, this seems kind of like a 1.0 because there are big features that you'd want in there that aren't in there yet. So hopefully they'll start adding these things as time goes by. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I'd love to get back to you. Hopefully I can answer your questions. Again, with a more complicated scene like this, things can get a little slow, a little buggy at this point, but hopefully that will get all ironed out. And when it's just footage and opacity and things like that, it's pretty smooth integration. If you like this video, please remember to subscribe to the channel and check out the blog over at retool.net. Be sure to check out our new product, Color Retooled, which is a set of looks presets for Premiere Pro CC. A ton of easy presets that you can use in Premiere and Speedgrade CC to quickly edit the look of your clips. Everything from brightness and contrast to vintage effects to things like vignettes that editors can quickly add to their clips and keep working. Also check out Relink Retooled, our conform tool for Premiere and Final Cut that will let you conform to your QuickTime media of different durations and file names than your original media. You can use it with combinations of tape name, file name, and of course you can use partial tape name and file name combined with metadata like time code and frame rate to help you relink your clips quicker and easier than ever before.